Hi everyone. So we're gonna do something slightly different today. First of all, you might notice I have this lovely thing here. I want to try not doing a voiceover. I'm not using a lav mic. We're gonna use this. It'll look a little silly, but that's okay. Let's see how this goes. Anyways, so I was at Ikea the other day and I noticed that they had coffee. Now I've, hi, hello, this is voiceover Morgan and I gotta say something real fast because I think I'm just very unobservant and didn't notice that Ikea sold coffee. They've been doing it since 2017, but this is my first time seeing it and I also didn't make videos back then. So we're gonna explore it. And this is a little explanation on why I haven't done a video about this until now. Okay, goodbye. Now I've seen in the past, they have this wonderful collection of coffee tools and coffee gear. In fact, James Hoffman has done a video about it in the past, which I will be linking below. However, when I went, I did notice this time they were selling actual coffee. Now I know they have a couple different series of these. When I was looking into it, they have an espresso series. They also have a like drip slash brewer series. And then they also sell some whole bean. Now the Ikea I was at only had the drip series. So I picked up a couple packages of each. I thought we'd give them a test and just to be totally authentic to the Ikea experience. I also picked up some brewing tools as well. So we'll take a look at those and we'll just see what Ikea coffee tastes like. Now, my understanding is this is what they serve in the cafe. So in those days when you could actually go to the Ikea cafe, this would be the coffee you'd be having. It says a second cup of coffee. And then down below it says, ground coffee, dark roast and organic. So then when you go a little bit lower down the packaging, you notice a couple of things. So it has a little coffee brewer on it. Each of these packages kind of shows you the best method of brewing these coffees. So as I mentioned before, these are all for drip. So this is a drip brewer. It has a slightly lower acidity. It's a little bit below the halfway mark. It has a full body at number four and it is a number four in roasting, which I'm just assuming means it's a dark roast coffee. Uh, this is over a pound of coffee, which is quite a lot. Usually when you go into most specialty shops, they'll be sold in increments of about 12 ounces, which is, it's 12 ounces, right? Not 12 grams. How much coffee do you use on pour a filter? 19 grams. <laughs> so this is 1.1 pounds of coffee, uh, which is 70, oh, it just says 17.6 ounces. So this is slightly, <laughs> slightly more than you will be getting if you're going into a specialty coffee shop. Now, the second one I got is this purple bag right here. The main labeling is the same. It says stay in the moment, a second cup of coffee. It is ground pressed coffee, dark roast and organic. Now you go down here and instead of having this back instead of having your little brewer you have your french press symbol so this is for a french press uh it has a slightly higher acidity it's a three so it's slightly above that middle marking this one again as we mentioned before is a two it has um a slightly heavier body and it also is a number four on roasting so these are both dark roasts i know ikea makes a medium roast as well i'm not totally sure about a light roast but this is all my ikea hat so this is what we're going with. Now, one thing that I did notice when I was looking at these is they don't have the origins of coffee on them. It does say on the back that these are 100% Arabica beans. It does say that they are from small scale coffee farmers in the countries. Well, it says countries like Mexico, Peru, and Honduras. So I'm not clear if those are the only countries of origin they source from or if that's just what some of them are. Oh, but one really cool thing is it says on the side and on the back that you can trace your coffee. So you go to utz.org slash Ikea, you input one of the label numbers, the best buy date, and you're able to trace where your coffee's from. And I found out that this coffee is from Honduras. So that's kind of cool. It probably makes them a lot easier to package and ship out very, very quickly, but you still have some degree of traceability to your coffee. So if you're interested in that, that's what you can find out. Let's talk about the rest of my Ikea haul real fast. Cause of course I got two of each of these coffees. I got the very famous Ikea French press. All right, so I also picked up this nifty little set, which I actually think should be pretty useful. We're just gonna give it a test. Uh, this is a coffee scoop as well as a coffee bag clip. I thought this looked really neat. I hope it works because if it does, I'm just gonna keep it and use it for my regular bags of coffee. I also thought because it's Ikea, we should test out the milk frother. If you can hear the cats, say hello to the cats. Anyway, so I picked up one of these and I also picked up one of their steaming slash pouring pitchers. I figured since we're making coffee, we might as well enjoy it. So I'll be steaming up some milk and we'll have like a little Olay sort of thing. That's gonna be delicious. And yes, Ikea doesn't explicitly sell coffee brewers like a drip brewer. So hang on, I'm gonna be cheating today. This is my 
drip brewer that I usually use every day. It's from Bonavita. I love it. It's not sponsored, but uh, if they want, all of these bags of coffee that I have are pre-ground. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I have not opened this yet. I've not tried any of it uh, because I thought it would be a fun surprise for all of this. Now, originally when I picked this up in store, it is, it is dense. Like, I don't know if you can hear that. It is, it's a solid block. And my brain originally thought, did they just like freeze dry or like vacuum seal just like a cube of coffee? Um, someone pointed out to me, someone who is slightly smarter than me pointed out that they probably just used a box, um, which makes a lot more sense. So let's find out which one of us is correct. Um, I'm correct, spoiler alert. <laughs> this is just a, <laughs> this is a vacuum sealed cube of coffee. <laughs> Look at it. I don't know if I can explain to you how dense this thing is. Like, I feel like I could club someone over the head with it. So it's not pretty, um, but it is something. This is why we have this tool. Cause I can imagine if you don't seal this off, you're gonna have coffee everywhere. I'm slightly scared to open this up. I'll be totally honest. I don't have a good track record of opening bags and doing it in a clean way, so I'm just gonna. Okay, so fun. Irregardless, we have a bag of coffee right here. Smells like coffee. All right, our water is just about finished boiling. I have my scoop. I have my coffee, my lovely scale, and I'm gonna start off with about 27 to 30 grams of coffee. This is a four cup French press. That's just kind of what I use for the most part. Of course, recipes and brewing variations will totally go person to person. That's just what we're doing and we'll see how it turns out. Let's see, I'm gonna do a nice rounded, oh, the water's done. I'm gonna do a nice, just kind of like flat scoop here and let's see how much. All right, so each one of these scoops are about seven and a half. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water in just to kind of initially wet all the grounds. Or I'm gonna give this a stir just to make sure all those grounds are sufficiently damp. Nothing's kind of floating around or too dry. Hey Google, set a timer for four and a half minutes. We're just gonna go for about- seconds, starting now. We're just gonna go for about four and a half minutes and then we will see where this ends up. Hmm. Maybe I need to use more coffee before I can do this. And then like, just kind of slot everything in there. Re okay. It's not beautiful, but uh, <laughs> it does work. We have in total a minute and a half left. This smells nice. I will say this very much smells like a very classic like diner coffee, which is what I often associate with dark roast. They're very comforting. They're very like, I always describe them as like coffee that tastes like coffee. You're waking up, you're going to like Denny's or IHOP and this is what they serve you and it's great. It goes with cream, it goes with sugar and all that stuff. So we'll find out if it actually tastes like that, but that's like my hope because I've got like a sneaky little weakness for like delicious diner coffee that goes with cream. Okay. That, uh, that looks like hot coffee to me. It's got a very, very light smell to it. It isn't super fragrant, I will say. Quite dark, very chocolatey, almost a little bit nutty as well. It's not, it's not a very complex coffee. It ha it's kind of like a one note, like you taste it. It has this kind of initial burst of dark, chocolatey, roasty tasting coffee, and then it's just kind of gone. There's nothing that really sticks around. I will say though, this does not have a lot of acidity to it. It's not bad, it's just kind of basic is the best way I can describe it as. Um, however, I am very curious to see how this acts with milk to see if it has a better flavor profile when paired with something that's a little bit creamier. So I'm gonna get out that pitcher. I'm gonna get out that little hand frother thing and let's just see how this goes. So we have ironically two Ikea AA batteries. They make it as easy as possible for you to never have to leave their shop for anything else. Will I remember how these go in? Probably not. Wait, am I not supposed to use double A's? I thought I was. Okay, wait, no. How do I fit two of these in? Two, 
double A batteries. Here you go. I'm phoning a friend here. Phone a husband. That's one of the choices, right? You just put them in, he says. That easy. It looks like you're struggling a little bit. Here, I'll get the other one. Maybe we can tag team this and see who gets done first. Ah, okay. Ah, it works. So, thank you, thank you. Yes. Okay, success. So excited. These things are always so fascinating to me. They aren't in any way near as good as steam wands, but they're not half bad either. I will say there was a point in my life where I judged these little hand frothers, but I think they're pretty great now. As a milky drink, I think this coffee is pretty lovely. It's not super intense. It's not a complicated coffee, but it is comforting. It is tasty and I'm not super mad at it. I'll be totally honest. Now that was just with French press. We still have one more coffee to go, which is gonna be our drip coffee. So let's hop onto that real quick and we'll see what we end up with. So this is another low acidity coffee. It says it has a pretty rich full body and is a dark roast. Okay, let's just go for it. All right, so I'm gonna be using this Bonavita brewer right here. I'm gonna be brewing four cups of coffee, so very comparable to what we did in the French press. I'm gonna use about 30 to 32 grams of ground coffee in here because that's what I like doing when I use this every day for most coffees. That tends to be a pretty reliable ratio of water to coffee, and we'll just see how it goes. Again, it still smells a lot fruitier, which is good. That's what I prefer. It smells a little bit more complex than the past one did. It doesn't have that kind of like one note, just like roastiness and that's it. So that's hard to say, roastiness. This one almost has a more milky flavor just up front. Um, I would describe it as being like a softer coffee, if that makes sense. Like instead of that kind of like punchy, more kind of like bitter dark chocolate i would describe this as having more like milk chocolatey notes where it's the flavors are a lot softer it kind of feels like it has a more rounded more like full bodied feel to it so i'm gonna add a little bit of milk to this and we'll see how it tastes with the milk added just a splash no need to go crazy milk pairs nicely with it all in all here are some of my final thoughts i think that if you are at ikea and you are getting furniture and you happen to have another errand afterwards that involves you picking up coffee, I think it wouldn't be the worst thing if you just grabbed these instead. They're pretty one note coffees. Again, they're not super complex, but they are not disgusting. That might not sound like high praise, but what I mean is they're very comforting. They're very much like a classic dark roast coffee. And if you serve this to me, pretty much anywhere, I wouldn't really question it. I would have no idea that this came from Ikea. The packaging's kind of fun. Whoops. I like the idea that there is some traceability behind that. Um, but yeah, rating, not the worst thing. Now I'm gonna do my best to go get my hands on the espresso grinds of this coffee because there is a whole series that is made especially just for espresso. And I know, I, I've seen this online, they also have whole bean coffee. So for another video, I'm gonna see if I can hunt those down and we'll talk about them. I think there's gonna be a lot more variation in the espresso than there would be in drip because overall I just prefer espresso. I have a lot more experience with it. Drip coffee is kind of, it's good, you know, it's yummy, it's a classic. Um, but for me, I don't find it nearly as interesting. So we're gonna go find the espresso grind and I'll be back, hopefully very soon with it. But for now, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for sticking around with me while I gave this my best go and I will see you next week and probably the week after that. Feel free to follow me on my other socials if you'd like. I post every day on TikTok and I do some stuff on Instagram. Other than that, have a lovely day, drink lots of coffee, and I'll see you later.